I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of like, you know, sex for roles, but I don't know. I guess I guess I've felt well, myself so outside of that. that I go. <laughs> no, no, but I mean yeah. we're talking about like the the next incarnation like like the idea of talking about people who have been actors since they're children is the idea that they are they get to a certain point where they've been doing it long enough and they can say goodbye to it and be like I want to do something else. Why not? Yeah. Like if you've been working a job since you're five years old, when you're 25, like, I think legitimately you can do something else. Go ahead. Like, you've been doing it for 20 years. You can relax. It doesn't you can that cross happen, that off though, your yeah. list. It, it depends, though, because I find that a lot of people just get involved in the arts and then they end up directing or, yeah, you know, true. they're just sort of like, that's the world that they know. You know, if you're raised on set, like, that's what you do because you've watched people do it forever. That's your skill set. Like, but some people are like, I want to get away from it or my parents wanted to do it. And there's all these laws now to like take care of the kids that are doing it. But I'm more concerned. I mean, certainly in our discussion that we were having about the idea of like, you're talking about how he had had that time, uh, Shia LaBeouf again, uh, about when he did the plagiarism thing Mm -hmm. and we were all. You know, everyone's like, oh, no, it's horrible. And then he, like, changes it up and time passes and people forget. And I feel like that's that's the journey of the whole thing. It's like, yeah, sure, you're going to bomb. You're going to screw something up real bad. Nobody wants you to plagiarize, of course. And in this day and age, it becomes really a lot harder even to steal because people call you on it super intensely fast. But um not that I'm, like, saying, hey, no, yeah, it's crime, so, it sucks. I'm, I it's honestly, like, I'm sorry, just real quick. I have here, that here, thought here. all the time. I'm like, man. Yeah, I wish crime were easier. Like, like forty years ago, crime seemed so easy. I don't know why everybody wasn't doing it. It seemed like, like seriously, it was easy, and they didn't realize it. Criminals of the seventies, you don't Dude. know how good you had it, man. No, like, so hard. You had now. to dial phones, like you know, like it was. I don't even know if they had like actual number buttons yet. You had to do the dial where you let it ride. That takes forever. Nine one one takes ten seconds to call. Just in the dialing time. Yeah, plus back in the day, you had to be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Yankee Candle 547, and then they'd put you, I don't know what words they used. Yeah, cops were drunk. <laughs> Everybody was matter. Everyone was just smacking. Oh, my God. Okay, this is ridiculous and off topic, but whatever, I'm telling you this story. Um, we have this television channel uh, on our, like, we catch with the digital antenna called Buzzer, and it's a game show network, and they play all these like 60s and 70s game shows, right? I love it. So we're watching this show called Card Shark, and the idea is they do some like intro questions where they're like, 100 people were pulled. How many of those people said this or whatever? And then whatever the game, doesn't matter. The question that they say is, they go, they ask the woman, there's a woman and a man, and they're like, um, 100 um, women were pulled. How many women got so mad that they smacked their man? And the woman is like, oh, goodness, that's, why would you do that? I mean, I wouldn't want to smack my man for fear of getting hit back harder. And my husband and I are like, what? She said that. She said, she said those words, like, and I was like, what? And we're like, okay, it's, it's like 1963. Like, that's what and you And the whole crowd was like, yeah, you're like, right. You better oh my watch God. yourself. Right? <laughs> you know, like. My husband was like, she said harder, which means like, it's not a question of whether or not she'll be hit. It's a question of like how hard it will yeah, be based yeah. on her He won't hit me as hard as he normally does when we're just, you know, when I just don't cook <laughs> dinner on time. Right. It's going to be well, it's gonna be like <laughs> a, a holiday drunk hard. That's, gonna, that's, that's a different gonna kind of shot to the mouth, Delia. Wow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't know why I thought of that, but uh, it made me think of just how different things are, you know? Imagine if, like, somebody said that to, like, Steve Harvey on a game show, and they just, like, all right, what? Like, everybody, they just, like, stop the broadcast <laughs> all of a sudden. Like, Social services comes in, they're like, like, ma'am, how can we help you? He says that on Family Feud, like, that guy right there, and they like, <laughs> her husband's like, what the fuck, shut up! I <laughs> just stares at her like, yeah, Sharon, when we get home... <laughs> <laughs> he starts putting a glove on. <laughs> yeah. You get one more X, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, domestic abuse is not funny. It's not. Um, but it was just so how commonplace it was her, to her. And, I mean, yeah, times are, are wild, right? It's so much. There's a thousand people. There's people, like, trying to be famous that are stupid, right? Like, 
there's people who are vine stars and like whatever the fuck oh, that means like God. the idea of the world that we are playing in is even different than like the Haley Joel Osment world yeah like, that was the 90s early 2000s like that was when you still could just be famous and people were writing 4,000 articles about how your face is weird and yeah. like you He's know an MTV VJ and just like have like a weird mental disability and everybody loves you like Polly Shore or um you just literally be a really dumb guy who's loud at being dumb <laughs> and be pop and be like a celebrity in the nineties. The nineties their their standards were pretty fucking low for what celebrities could be, I think. Uh whatever, there's like a billion famous dogs. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I don't know that we can say that somehow, like, our celebrities are better. Yeah, like, that like, coupon the- lady, the coupon lady with the daughter. That's the thing, though. Coupon Now, lady. exactly, oh, I have no idea what she's talking now? about. Is that but, a reality show thing or something? It was. It was that little, like, those little pageant kids. Oh, oh, boo. But, uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. I okay, know what okay, it is. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's not even endorse that. I, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, her mom was just a hoarder and she, a coupon queen, and she just got a bunch of toilet paper. I want the one episode I saw. Her kids were throwing toilet rolls of toilet paper at each other and just like wasting it. And I thought, cool, glad that whatever got chopped down so your kids could have fun and fucking rule wherever the fuck they are. It was ridiculous. You know, like the but justice think- there though is they don't get paid. They get paid jack shit and. They they don't realize that the reason they have a television show is so that the rest of, like, the 90% of the world around them can just laugh at what it's like to be in that scenario, like, to live in Virginia and drink Mountain Dew all the time. And I shit. think that when the Duck Dynasty guys realized that, like, 90% of the people were just making fun of them, that that's when they stopped wanting to do it. Well, that and they, you know, they got homophobic out loud. No, but that's the other thing too, is that like reality stars get all of the bad part of fame, all of the extra attention, all of the like overwhelming involved in your life bullshit, and none of the fun. I get to pretend to be somebody else. I mean, I, of course, they're pretending to be somebody else, but that's sort of probably already the persona like you were saying, like how some people just live in their persona. Those people are great reality stars yeah. because they have nowhere else to be. Like, I can't be on all the time. Like, you know, I'm happy to answer everyone's questions all the time, but, like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm leaving now because if I move two more feet, seven more people are going to ask me questions. And not that I don't want to, but sometimes it's like, oop, I'm at my threshold. And because I know that, I'm like, "Uh, can I handle this? Like, what kind of fame thing do I want? You know? Yeah. What am I going for? Like, I kind of felt like that, like, coming back from having to go home recently, where it's just like, I have to give the same, like, you know, circle of life, life goes on, everything, everything's going to be all right, let's move forward kind of speech so many times that it's just like, I was like avoiding people for a really long time. And Mm -hmm. it's like, no matter what it is, it's just like, I hate having to like, talk about the same thing over and over again and I think that's like a huge failure of mine as far as like trying to be an entertainer because I kind of I feel weird talking about like me and the shit I'm trying to do all the time and you kind of need that you know to get it out there well that's these days you know I was what was I just listening to I don't know some some podcast some person I'm gonna say it's likely Mark Maron or Pete Holmes just to give credit where credit is due because that's pretty much what I listen to but um the idea was that these people, you know, were working on their uh, on their art, and, and before you could just write a joke, and it's a joke. But now, it's about being vulnerable. It's about being like telling your story. Yeah. What's and, and like even when we had that gal come, um, maybe about. Six months ago, remember, we had that girl who came and talked about, like, TV writing and, like, development stuff and how, like, oh, yeah. you should try to write something that's, like, about your own life and that, like, if it's about your own life, then the development people will be, like, great, you have unending amounts of episodes potentially in you, so yeah. that's what you should go for, like, if you want the kind of deal because that's what they're looking for at this point. And I'm like, okay, that's great, but... Like, 
I keep struggling to figure out what it is about my life that anybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. You know, like me, maybe, you know, not that that's very narcissist. I'm sorry. I'm hugely narcissist. But like, yeah, I can see why I could be like, hey, who wants to see me on TV? Like, sure, that would be fun. Everyone would like that. We could figure out some way of me to talk about whatever. But like, I don't know, like telling the story. See, like. No shit, reality television has sort of uh, opened up. It's caused this nationwide, like, pandemic of uh, voyeurism. Like, this, like, it's opened up this really voyeuristic side of everyone where they just like to, I don't know, they just like to watch people, like, re- like regular people do regular people things. Like, hmm. my parents watched a show called Chrisley Knows Best, and as as far as I can tell, it's set in South Carolina, so I guess that's kind of why they watch it. It's basically about this, like, gay guy and his beard wife and his pretty family, and they, like, live in Charleston, and they kind of have money, and he's, like, a he's like a wedding, uh, he's, like, an event coordinator or whatever, and... Does everyone know he's gay? No, I mean, I'm... They, I think anybody who listens to him talk for three seconds knows he's gay, uh, and I think it's been brought up, and he says no, because, yeah, he has a wife... And, like, four kids that are all just, like, blonde and perfect and everything. But uh, the gay parts, that's that's sort of a side. It's literally just about a rich white family in South Carolina that that's it. That's it. That is all the show is about is about hmm. rich white people in South Carolina. Like, there's no weird hook. There's no games they play. There's no challenges. There's no nothing. Hmm. Just slightly affluent blonde people in South Carolina. And it's like... Apparently, a lot of people watch this show. It's in its, like, fourth or fifth season already. I watched the California re- version of those. You know, Laguna Beach and uh, and whatever the other I one was called. I watched Laguna Beach and The Hills. The Hills, that's it. Yes. I mean, yeah, that was... The rain. Anyway, <laughs> that was the that was white. That was rich white people in California. And there's at least drama there. there. Those are young, sexy people. Like there's this is just a family. I don't like. There's not even but really like he hair plans pulling. weddings. Is there are there weddings? Kinda, yeah, but it's yeah, not. Re- it's not really about that. It's not like oh, him weird. trying to get weddings put together. It's literally just about mm-hmm. the family bullshit that they deal with, and like his kids are little spoiled brats. And yeah, like, I, I appreciate and- the voyeurism thing. I think there's also the other side of that, which is that like everyone thinks their shit is important. Yeah, and I think that came from the give everybody a. And I'm, I'm sounding like my you know dad here at this point, but it's like everybody's getting a trophy. Why? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I don't understand yeah, why everybody has to get one. And as soon as everybody gets a trophy, everybody thinks, oh, my my shit is really important and everyone cares about it. Well, that's social media, too. Like, like people used to just keep their shit inside their stupid heads. And now it's like 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 a diary. That's what, it, that's what we used to do. Like, our important thoughts and things we wanted to hold on to is like a diary. And Facebook is our diary now. And we, and we think we need everybody to hear everything we have to say all the time and uh well i mean even things like this like the the idea that anyone would give a shit about listening to this but they do i mean i listen to stuff like this all the time i've listened to the first one we recorded 13 times just kidding (laughs) (laughs) what no way Um, it was like awesome sorry that's mine yeah i was like wow did that come out of the uh (laughs) i was like what the fuck am i doing I packed that wrong. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Weird. Amy's other kid. By the way, I'm <laughs> trying to drug you all. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talking just, uh, about voyeurism. Twitch TV, even Twitch TV. Are you guys familiar with Twitch? No, one's TV? Twitch TV. It's a uh, it's this it's a website like it's a website basically where you can pay to watch ple- just to watch people play video games. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean I've heard about those things. And then they have um it's not like a rooster teeth thing, don't they have that too, you know? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, if they like bought that company out because it's super successful. Hmm. Um my brother's ex-girlfriend uh was so successful at it actually that she moved to London like she's making like thousands of dollars. On just Twitch playing TV. video games? Not doing anything sexual, not doing anything weird, just, like, there's a camera on her, and then you can see the game she's playing, and, like, she just sits there. I mean, she's a pretty girl, I guess, but, like, she Does doesn't... she say stuff? Yeah, she talks, like, like oh, man, this is, you know, there's a lot of dungeons in Zelda, or whatever the fuck, you know, and, uh, <laughs> like, jeez, could have less dungeons. I like the idea that, like, a famous, like, that people would be watching a person playing Legends of Zelda. 
No, I mean, that's they will. They will just watch you play any game, any old game, any new game, anything. Yeah. Like Tetris or like 